this session, I'm going to explain to you about the idea of finger holds. This is something I've used in a, a variety of contexts. And even if somebody is in a very weak state, say they're lying in bed, approaching death, they can still do this and get some comfort from it. And it's related to the idea, again, of the meridians that run through our body. And as they run through our body, they pass through different organs. Different organs tend to hold on to different emotions, like the kidneys, for example, with anxiety, which is why you're quite likely to wake up. If you're holding a lot of anxiety, you're quite likely to wake up about four o'clock in the morning, because that's when the kidneys are processing and cleaning themselves and that can release some of the anxiety emotions that you've stuffed down there during the day. And also the meridians pass through the fingers. If you've had reflexology treatment more often on your feet but also it can work on your hands you'll know that different points on the feet or the hands relate to different organs. So this is a very simplified version of that. And all that the people you're working with are required to do is have a go. Depending on who it is, you may or may not want to explain the rationale and the reason why it works. But I've found that generally people will try it anyway because it's, it's not awkward. It doesn't require any great skill uh, and it's something they can do comfortably in front of another person. And I tend to start with the thumb and whichever finger we're holding, you hold it loosely with the other hand. It doesn't matter if it's right or left hand, whichever feels better for any for the person. Let's say they're holding their thumb. And suggest to them that they hold it with love. So maybe imagine that it's a little baby that they're holding close. They're holding to give comfort and solace. And simply hold on to that thumb. We're not gripping onto it. It's not hurting. It's a very relaxed gesture. It's more like a caress than a firm grip. And encourage them to close their eyes if they feel comfortable with that. I find it helps if you close your own eyes. It makes it safer for other people to do it too. And just do a few deep, gentle, early breaths. And the thumb is known for holding sadness or grief. So with each inhale, we acknowledge the sadness we're holding. And with the exhale, we imagine we're letting it go, flowing out through the thumb. We inhale, we accept the grief we're holding. And as we exhale, we release it. A few more breaths here. You can rest their hands in their lap if that's more comfortable. Might be nice to have a cushion on your lap. Rest your hands on the cushion so there's no tension anywhere. You want to aim towards being able to do this for several minutes. you will be able to judge how long. What I suggest is 
and go for at least 10 slow breaths. Because especially the first time you do this, you're going to feel a little awkward, maybe a little anxious about it. So you need to let yourself settle into it too. And I often find that that moment when I settle in is the moment when the other people settle in. It's very interesting doing this with a group of fidgety, twitchy young people and then feeling the magic they suddenly settle to it and the room stills. They allow themselves to feel something. Accept the sadness and let it go. Acknowledge the grief. Let it go. And then at some point when it feels complete, you open your eyes and let the people know that we're finished doing that one. They may want to share. It's good to have some tissues handy because acknowledging sadness in this way can mean some things arise, come up for release. Allow that to be in the room. And then to switch it up a bit after that, I often go to the middle finger next. And the middle finger is about anger. And sooner or later, somebody you're working with will point out that the middle finger is also an angry gesture. Yeah. And they find that highly entertaining. Or with the thumb as well, somebody will often observe that it's, it's something that babies do naturally. They uh, suck their thumb, they comfort themselves by holding their thumb with their mouth. So they instinctively know. And maybe when that angry gesture was developed, that was also an instinctive embodied gesture. So the same process, we ask them to loosely hold the finger, the middle finger, rest it on a cushion if they have one, or on their knee on the table and this time as we inhale we acknowledge the anger that we feel there can be a lot of social pressure especially on women to not express anger to bottle it up and then it seeps out as nasty comments or put downs, clattering the dishes, or just vacating, maybe literally storming out of the room, or metaphorically being still in the room but not present absenting yourself in your head, checking out. So this, in this situation, we're not judging the anger. We're not condemning it. We're accepting that it's part of the usual human range of emotions. And we're letting it go. You might say we're loving our anger and we're letting it go. And anger can be a very motivating emotion too. Sometimes we need that surge of anger to get us the energy and the commitment to change something that needs to be changed. 
So it has its value in the moment. We don't want to be left with the residue. We want to clear it out. So we're inhaling and accepting anger and exhaling and releasing it. Inhaling, acknowledging it. Exhaling, releasing it. And spend enough time here to allow Probably what will happen first is the recent angers will present for release. And then if you continue the practice, deepen the practice into three minutes or four minutes, some very ancient angers may come up. That the person you're working with didn't even realize they were holding. And again, that can trigger some reaction in the room. I've heard people leap to their feet to rant and rage. But in that space where emotions tolerated and accepted with a view to being released, these feelings tend to pass through people much faster. They're not holding back. They're not stamping down on their reaction. They let it out and let it go. And again, just when you feel the time is right, open your eyes, check in with the people in the room and announce that you finished anger for today. Now one that especially women and also younger people relate to a lot is the little finger. And the little finger is about literally feeling small. Small finger, feeling small. So I've also started with these three because they're the easiest to remember. You think the baby sucking its thumb for sadness, the finger gesture for anger, small finger, feeling small. And this is about all the times when you felt put down, when you felt diminished, humiliated, when you felt imposter syndrome, like I shouldn't really be here. Why would anyone listen to me? It doesn't matter what I think. The times when you've said, no, no, that's fine. You haven't meant it. When you've diminished yourself for the other might have been a bullying situation. It might have been a holding the peace situation. Lots of reasons why this happens. Maybe just embarrassment because you inadvertently showed up at the party wearing fancy dress. But for all the times when you felt small, when you felt less than, when you felt diminished, belittled, unimportant, unacknowledged, undervalued. So we hold that little finger. And this is a nice one to remind them of the little baby. Hold the finger as though you were holding a small, small baby and comforting it. And imagine that baby could speak and said to you, but I'm so small, nobody cares about me. And what you would say to the baby, how you would reassure it, how you would remind it of its unique place in the world, its own special value. Nobody else is the same as this baby. It has so much potential, so much ahead of it, so many possibilities to take its own special blend of skills and attitude and temperament 
and make what it will of itself in the world. It's absolutely fine that it's small. It's beautiful that it's small. And each of us has been that little baby. And even if nobody said those things to us at the time, we can look back at that small infant that was us and feel that love for it, for him or her or them. As we're inhaling, we're acknowledging the times we felt small. And as we're exhaling, we're accepting and releasing that idea. Feeling small is not the same as being small. Feeling unimportant is not the same as being unimportant. Each and every one of us has value, has legitimacy. We are each valid to stand in our, our ground, to hold our space, to be who we are. And again, when you feel that it's been long enough, that it's the right amount of time for today, open your eyes and you invite them to stop. And there's often sharing. People often want to share after that because there have been so many incidents in all of our lives. So we've done three of the fingers. The pointing finger is about fear and shock. It's when something's happened abruptly, it's, it's thrown you, it's thrown the person that you're working with. It's been a shock. The ring finger is anxiety. So there's a, there's a subtle difference between these two. Yeah? This is the fear or the shock. It's the sudden event that has caused an upset. It's come out of the blue, it was unexpected. Whereas anxiety is more that ongoing fears of what could happen, what did happen, going round and round in circles in the middle of the night, keeping yourself awake. So you repeat the same process with the, with the first finger for fear or shock. Again, acknowledging it on the in-breath, releasing it on the out-breath. And then for anxiety. Acknowledging on the in-breath, releasing on the out-breath, accepting. You don't need to judge yourself for being anxious because then you get anxious about being anxious. Inviting them to accept their anxiety and release it. Knowing that in all of these, with all of these fingers, we are not our feelings. Our feelings are something we are experiencing. They're our response to something in the outside world or something we've imagined inside our heads. But they're not who we are, so we can feel them, maybe take action as a result of them, and then we can let them go. We don't need to keep on holding on to them. Imagine if every food item that you'd ever eaten, you were still holding the packaging. Yeah, your house would be completely full. You have the food, you need the food in the moment. You don't need to keep the packaging for the rest of your life. Our bodies are full of that. So we're clearing that out, we're letting it go. One of the advantages of this system, apart from being easy to learn, easy to do, is that it's pretty subtle. So I've worked with people and they've said, like next time they're in a situation where they're feeling angry, they could do that while they're in that moment and probably people wouldn't notice what they were doing. If they wake up in the night anxious, they could hold that ring finger for anxiety and soothe themselves and nobody need ever know. 
because even though every single one of us experiences every single one of these emotions and a whole lot more, we still can feel shame around them. And to be seen to be dealing with them may, some people may feel that is also shameful. So having a technique that can be pretty subtle and personal and doesn't involve anybody else can be a great tool to have in the kit bag.